The Norman conquest of England may have started with the Battle of Hastings in 1066, but it did not end there. As the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records, to consolidate his victory and suppress rebellious subjects, William built castles far and wide throughout this country, including at Windsor. The first Norman castles were built at Hastings and Pevensey on the south coast in 1066, with further waves of castle building typically following rebellions. They were a crucial, if not the only means of making the conquest permanent. These castles, which came in various sizes and were normally first made of wood and then rebuilt with stone, were imposing and unfamiliar in design. They had two distinctive features, the mot and the bailey. The latter was a defensible area, closed off by ditches, moats and wooden palisades. The mot, within this area, was a raised mound of earth, on top of which stood a structure called the donjon. The word donjon comes from the Latin word dominium, meaning lordship. This gives us an idea as to their purpose, not just as defensive strongholds, but as symbols of the power and authority of the new regime. It was no accident that the most impressive looking side of the Tower of London faces in toward and would have loomed over the city. Windsor Castle still retains its mot, the largest in England, on which now sits the Round Tower, one of the most iconic dungeons in the world. As William of Poitiers wrote of the fortifications in London, Norman castles were first and foremost built as a defence against the inconstancy of the numerous and hostile inhabitants. It is sometimes forgotten that the conqueror faced many years of resistance to his rule. Norman castles don't seem to have been built according to any grand national strategy, but rather for a range of reasons, and typically as a response to local circumstances, with many being built atop existing Saxon defences, sometimes recycling building materials. This was not just more efficient, but helped stamp Norman authority over past symbols of Anglo-Saxon power, and the settlements that had been developed around these structures. This approach also provided the Normans with a ready-made source of rents and services to support their castles. Castle building also had a huge impact on patterns of settlement, with new villages and towns growing around them, including at Windsor. It is estimated that three quarters of all towns founded in England between 1066 and 1150 adjoined castles. The reasons for this are easy to understand. A castle provided a ready-made market for craftspeople and traders. At the same time, towns provided castles with a source of labour, services and income from rents and tolls. Castle building also led to disruption and destruction though. As recorded in the Doomsday Book, William the Conqueror's great survey of what his new kingdom was worth. 27 houses were destroyed to make way for a new castle in Cambridge, 16 in Gloucester, 166 in Lincoln and 98 in Norwich. Not even sacred ground was spared. In 1069, the Archbishop of York complained to the Sheriff of Worcester that the town's new castle cut off part of the Cathedral Cemetery. What then was the purpose of Windsor Castle? The castle does not seem to be in a particularly strategic location. It is roughly a day's march from London, but there are more direct routes to the city. Similarly, while its placement on a hill provides a good vantage point to survey the surrounding area, hills were rarely a determining factor in where other castles were built. A clue perhaps lies in nearby Old Windsor, in a field called Kingsbury. This name derives from the Anglo-Saxon word burr, which were fortified settlements. Kingsbury was therefore the burr of the king, meaning Old Windsor was the site of a royal residence. There is evidence of a settlement at Old Windsor dating back to the 7th century, with a palace at least since the reign of Edward the Confessor. While the clay and sandy soil made for poor farmland, as a charter from William's reign reveals, Old Windsor seemed suitable and convenient for a royal retirement on account of the river and its nearness to the forest. Richard Fitz Neil added that the forest was the sanctuary and special delight of kings, where laying aside their cares, they withdrew to refresh themselves with a little hunting. Norman kings may have liked coming to Windsor to share in the delights of the forest enjoyed by their Saxon predecessors, but building a castle here was also about asserting the power of England's new rulers. The same is true of the decision to hold crown wearing ceremonies in Old Windsor. Such ceremonies were another important way of asserting William's authority and that of his successors. Work on the castle, in the parish of Clua, 
began in 1070 and took 16 years to complete. The rebellion of Hereward the Wakes may also have prompted William to order the construction of a castle here, to help guard the western approach to London, but like others, it also served as a centre of administration and justice. A year after Windsor Castle was recorded in the Doomsday Book, William died. He was succeeded first by his third son, William, and then by the Conqueror's youngest son, Henry. The chronicler, Henry of Huntingdon, records that Henry I, who got married in the castle chapel, also held his Whitsuntide court for the first time at New Windsor. This suggests that, at least from 1110 onward, Windsor Castle itself was now a royal residence of great importance, beginning its nine-century-long association with the monarchy. <laughs>